Welcome to my talk, Over the Egg Computation in Fading Wireless Channels with Applications to Federated Learning. My name is Robin Steinchak, and uh, this work was mainly done by Matthias Frey and uh, Igor Bielakovic. And in fact, Matthias presented this work at the last Information Theory Workshop. Wireless networks are becoming highly dense and they also collect more and more data. And this might become a problem in future due to as cars wide as resources. <clears throat> On the other hand, there are many applications where there is no need for collecting data at a certain location. This is especially the case in wireless sensor networks where, for example, the average value of some measurements needs to be computed. So we focus on such class of applications that need only some functions of the distributed data and can deal uh, and can also deal with a controlled amount of noise. So in this case, we let transmitters use the channel simultaneously for the over the air computation. And this yields a system that scales favorably with the number of transmitters. So this is the outline of my talk. And um, I will first, I will introduce the OTA computation system model and um, then the main theoretical result of this study. Then uh, uh, I will present an application of the OTA scheme to vertical federated learning. And I will finish the talk by uh, showing some numerical result, results on vertical federated learning. Our channel model is uh, quite standard. So you have, we have complex value channel inputs, uh, random fading, coefficients, real and imaginary parts are sub-Gaussian with variance one, and then uh, we have random channel noise. Um, also, uh, real and imaginary parts are sub-Gaussian. So, and here there are some assumptions on fading and noise. Uh, first of all, we assume only the knowledge about of the channel statistics at the transmitter, and then as I said, the fading and noise are in the class of sub-Gaussian distributions. And uh, we also allow some limited correlations in fading and noise. And uh, would like to point out that sub-Gaussian model and show some robustness against many common types of deviations from the IID Gaussian assumption. Here, you can see a list of uh, examples for scenarios uh, covered by our system model, which for example, includes scenarios with a limited number of multipath components so that Gaussian T doesn't hold, or scenarios with sources of correlated and non necessarily Gaussian uh, interference. So as I said, uh, we are interested in computing or more precisely in estimating um, some or approximating some functions. And um, we would like to uh, provide some performance guarantees. And to this end, we need to limit, you know, the class of functions we are interested in. And um, so every function has this nomographic representation. And here you, you can see um, k inner functions, and we assume that they are measurable and bounded, which includes the class of continuous and bounded functions. And uh, here we have um, outer uh, function, and then we assume that it is strictly increasing function with this additional property. And um, this class includes, for example, Lipschitz continuous functions. Here you have uh, uh, examples of functions that uh, belong to this class. I mean, of course, k linear functions such as sums and arithmetic averages, but also p, p norms on compact domains for p larger than or equal to one. But uh, the maximum function is not in the class. So the results uh, I'm going to show do not apply to. Uh, the case of uh, estimating the maximum function. So here uh, we use the following scheme to prove our uh, bound. So we have a um, 
inputs on which we would like to uh, evaluate our function. And then we have a, a randomized preprocessor, which is an encoder, um, and generates a sequence of AIM M channel inputs. So then we have uh, our channel M for channel and uh, channel output YM. And then this is the input to post-processor and at the output of the post-processor, we get an estimate of um, the function we are interested in. So this is uh, um, the main result. Um, it states that for any epsilon positive epsilon, after M channel uses, we have an estimate F bar of the function F such that the probability of the error, so that the error is larger than or equal to epsilon, is smaller than the expression on the right hand side. And here, this function gamma a decays exponentially with m for fixed arguments, and the arguments are defined here. So we have the uh, sub Gaussian norms, and then there's a um, uh, transmitted peak power constraint and uh, two parameters two parameters describing the correlation of the fighting and noise. So in the paper, you can find an explicit and non-asymptotic ex expression. So it can be calculated for, for any number of channel users M. And as I said, decays exponentially with M when M tends to infinity. So now, um, now, as I mentioned, uh, would like to present the application of uh, an application of the OTA scheme to uh, federated learning, and uh, we different between horizontal federated learning and vertical federated learning, depending on whether the data is uh, horizontally uh, or vertically partitioned uh, among data owners or users. So if a matrix um, denotes the data held by each user, then each row of the matrix represents a sample, each column represents um, um, the future. So horizontal uh, federated learning here on the left-hand side or sample-based federated learning is uh, uh, or applies to the scenarios, uh, to scenarios that data sets um, of different users share the same feature space, but differ in samples. On the other hand here, uh, ver vertical federated learning or feature-based federated learning deals with the cases that data sets share the same uh, sample space, but uh, differ in uh, feature space. So, Vertically federated learning is the process of aggregating these different features to build a model with data from users from different users in a privacy preserving manner. Vertical schemes can also perform the labeling in the de decentralized way. So here we show application of OTA to vertical federated learning and focus on um, binary classification problem. And um, the general um, approach is model agnostic in the sense that arbitrary and um, even different ML models can be used in a distributed agents, but we consider a slight variation of the well-known boosting technique. So here, so we, we have uh, um, local base classifiers and then boosting classifier is a weighted sum of these base classifiers. They are computed decentrally at the nodes in the network and, uh, and each agent bases its own classification on the locally observed features and weighted sum is used as the other computed function. So in fact, with this sum is approximated um, um, using you know um, the over the R computation scheme, so that you know we don't have a, a exactly here a weighted sum, but some noisy version of this boosting classifier. And also, of course, we have to combat the impact of uh, of fading. 
So here are some advantages of the approach. As I said, it's agnostic to how the base classifier works. So works for any base classifier. And then we auto computation result combined with slightly modified Adaboost yields theoretical error guarantees. There is a disadvantage of our scheme because training does not use auto computation. And that's why it's case linearly in the number of of agents. So some uh, numerical results. I mean, synthet synthetic classification uh, problem, fading and noise IID Gaussian here, we assume for the simulation and compare the following schemes, Adaboost, uh, Adaboost based scheme uh, or equality uh, majority vo vote, always equal, advantage, no communication necessary during the training, and then um, TDMA scheme. And here you can see on the y-axis test error and then on x-axis number of complex channel users. So, and um, we have here 10 transmitters as an error of zero dB. And then you can see DFA, DFA is distributed federated um, approximation and then it um, um, yeah, includes the over the air computation. And then you have, you know, here also TDMA schemes. And uh, here in blue for um, equal, equal majority and in red uh, using Adaboost. And um, first of all, I mean, what I would like to emphasize is the gain of this TFA scheme when compared to the TDMA. And uh, here we have um, um, two curves depending on whether we normalize the average power for the or peak uh, power. But in both cases, um, the gain is in terms of the number of uh, complex channel users is uh, significant. And um, if you go from 10 to 100 transmitters, so you see that um, the performance gain um, increases, and this is what we observe, and in fact, is uh, well known um, that um, the use or the advantage of um, using OTA scheme um, um, increases, you know, with the number of, um, of, of, of transmitters. So here we only have, you know, some uh, theoretical performance bounds on this uh, um, on this performance. So this already concludes my talk. Um, and so it's known that auto computation can yield huge performance gains in networks with many nodes. We um, provide that here uh, robot theoretical guarantees for uh, the approximation error and uh, numerical results show um, considerable considerable performance gains in binary classification, even for a moderate number of transmitters. There are some open questions for future research. Um, we uh, still would like to tighten theoretical uh, auto computation guarantees, extend the results to regression and classification with more than uh, two la labels and uh, develop more efficient distributed training schemes and evaluate the whole thing with real data, with real world data. Thank you for attention and open for questions.